Throughout my career as a professional photographer, it seems like every time I landed on an island, I would sooner or later come face to face with a conch shell. Maybe it was meant to be. When I came upon an old hand-colored photograph of my mother taken before I was born, there she was proudly wearing a shell necklace and small conch earrings. Who knew? Some things just can't be explained, so I won't even try. Like for instance the conch sculpture in her backyard circa 1940s in Miami. This obsession with one of nature's most beautiful and lasting creations still inspires me today. After going through my pink period in the early 1990s, I retired my paintbrush and went on to screenwriting and filmmaking. Having survived all that, it seems the salty taste on my fingers still lingers and nothing comes close to an ocean breeze and a beachcombing detail in search of our beloved conch. One cannot have a love affair with a conch shell without being influenced in some way by the Florida Keys. After escaping from Miami without a suitcase, the lure of Key Largo was more than an old movie or a song. It was a chance to live in paradise. Mosquitoes withstanding and an occasional hurricane, it was there I nested and became one of the conch and started a small coconut plantation facing Blackwater Sound. Creative juices flowing, my batteries recharging, and my wine glass half empty, the only thing between me and the backcountry waters was an old rope hammock. Back in 1992, I made the journey south from Key Largo to Key West in search of conch. Famous for being the conch republic and home of all native Key Westers, aka conchs, I was surprised to see very few actual depictions of the shell itself. The first place I saw a conch was on the city's garbage cans and the water department's cars. Since then, things have changed and now there's an abundance of conch paraphernalia as far as the eye can see. After shadow boxing Hemingway on Duval Street, I was lured by the smell of conch fritters and the taste of Key West conch chowder. When the alcohol subsided, I began my research on the history of the conch republic and decided to produce a poster commemorating their 10-year anniversary. On April 23, 1982, the U.S. Border Patrol set up a roadblock on US-1, causing a 15-mile traffic jam. Local conks were furious, and Key West decided to secede from the Union. The southernmost city declared war, surrendered, and immediately requested $1 billion in foreign aid. Now, almost 30 years later, with conch chowder still the national food and the pelican still the national bird, we celebrate. They say that if you don't drink or fish, you shouldn't be in the Keys. However, if you do drink and fish, or drink like a fish, it's all good. The Keys disease has been around for a very long time. My father once told me back in the early 1960s when I was a young child that it's not the whiskey that'll kill you, it's the water. Sitting with a fishing pole in my hand offshore in his seaworthy houseboat, waiting for a grunt to surrender, life just seemed a little more like an adventure. Fishing and grinning, catching a tan. No bites yet from these aluminum cans. Don't ask, I don't even like beer. Conk, if you like the keys. Make no mistake about it. If this photograph was taken in the United States, I would get arrested. The Queen Conk, AKA Conk Traband, is on the endangered species list, and you are not allowed to touch or molest it in any way off the waters of the United States. Whether you're tracing Hemingway's steps, searching for Atlantis or the Fountain of Youth, Bimney should be on the list. Myself, I was in search of Bimney bread and cocktails with the chance to peer into the mystical waters through the glass of a conch bucket to locate, you guessed it, fresh conch. After having wahoo and eggs for breakfast, I was lucky enough to run across a conch fisherman who offered me a chance to eat the pistol from a fresh, raw conch, so of course I jumped on it. It looked like spaghetti, tasted like calamari, and supposedly put lead in my pencil. Normally I write with a pen, but what the hell, I was on an adventure. You must admit that at some time in your life, you put one to your ear and heard the sound of the ocean. Inspired by the classic 1959 Cadillac, what better a conch cruiser can you think of? 
This whimsical drawing of Detroit at its best could easily be seen parked on Duval Street beneath the shade of a poinciana tree. Across the street from the Hemingway House sits the Key West Lighthouse, a beacon for all you widow walkers waiting for your sailors to come home. In the meantime, have a glass of wine and water your plants. Tomorrow is another day. Respect concrete. Conch shells have been used in conch construction for many years throughout the Caribbean. Just add a little cement and let the sculptor and you have your way with some conchs. You'll be glad you did. I love the smell of conch in the morning. Tides like tourists come and go, but everyone loved the big conch. At least I did. If grouper therapy didn't work, there was always conch on hand. You could eat it raw, cracked, chowdered, gumboed, or frittered. What was I thinking? Check out the three inlaid conchs in the Coral Rock fireplace. A waterfront seafood restaurant in the Keys specializing in conch, the Big Conch Sea Grub Saloon, years 2000 through 2003, were a combination of Robinson Crusoe, Jimmy Buffett, and Christopher Columbus. It was all about survival, song, and discovery. The thought of drinking ice-cold conch from a palm tree is a little out there. A cluster of coconuts ready to go ballistic on your head as you lazily nap away the afternoon on your hammock strung between two palms could be a memorable experience. Crack open a bottle of coconut wine and numb your premeditated wounds to soften the blow. I'm lost. Please do not tell anyone where I am. Conkaholic. For some reason, the influx of wine has always affected my thinking in some way, shape, and form. Thank goodness. Nude Beach. I know. Let's try and find the conch. If you think the pink inside of a conch shell is somewhat similar to a female body part, then you're on the right page. And there, of course, there's conch mermaids. Man has always been driven to the sea. Conked out. You know, we've all been there. Or if we haven't, we would all like to be there. It's not on a map, it's a state of mind. So just keep the margaritas coming. The only thing you need to think of is salt or no salt. It doesn't matter if you can't remember where that left flip-flop went to or with whom. Just a dip in the tepid salt water and wash away your sins and try to plan your next ones. Conk sale. Even a waitress's blank check can be your canvas for those spontaneous conks running through your brain. Chica conk, chica conk conk. This shady painting was the last in my conk series, but I can still hear the ocean if I put my ear to the canvas. I guess I've always believed in permanently living temporarily, just a well-deserved need to live by the sea. You don't have to own it, so don't even try. Some of the best views on the East Coast are from under bridges. Sounds pretty good to me. I hope you've enjoyed your journey through Conkland. And in your travels, if you ever run across a conch shell, think of me, the Sun King. And remember, conch ain't got no bone. Yippee, 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 yippee